Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. They're still missing. It's been nearly 10 weeks since two California City boys were reported missing. And as each day passes, more questions arise. This morning, hear what the police chief says about the dozens of people of interest and what this means for the investigation. Plus, difficult days for teachers and students continues as the pandemic keeps schools closed. But one local teacher is not letting the dark times get in the way, bringing light to the virtual classroom. And a possible game changer, a new coronavirus vaccine could be approved for distribution in the U.S. How this one dose shot could get us out of the pandemic sooner. We'll speak with a local doctor about what you need to know about this new vaccine. Today is Thursday, February 25th, 2021. And good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky in for Maddie Jansen this morning. Now, Alex, we saw some gorgeous weather. I'm sure you've been uh, enjoying that sunlight, right? Oh, absolutely. It has been really nice over the last several days. One thing I'm noticing, though, the sunset is getting later. I'm starting to notice that we're getting a little bit of extra light during the evening hours, which is which is nice. I do like that, especially during this time of year. Uh, let's turn things over to Kevin Charette, who has a look at our forecast. And uh, Kev, we were talking about this yesterday. It's hard to believe, though, that we are number one almost done with February. We just have a couple days left of this month, but that means that we have daylight savings. That's going to be coming to an end here pretty soon. Yeah, March 14th. And yeah, we took the dogs for a walk uh, last night and that's one thing we were saying. Hey, there's a little more daylight each day and that was uh, right around six o'clock. So it's nice to see. And uh, we've been seeing some beautiful, beautiful sunsets as well. I want to show you one right now to start off the morning. And this is coming to us from Brenda Twist and she was up near the bluffs and take a look at that as the sun was going down. Just a beautiful shot. Uh, so get out and enjoy it while we have it. As we take a look at the skies, you can see clear uh, conditions right now and that'll be the case again today so I expect another beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset. Uh, downtown Bakersfield right now sitting into the 40s 45 degrees on the temperature a south southwest wind at five miles per hour and as we take a look at the day and the temperatures you can see we'll rise into the upper 60s again with just a light breeze here in the valley and then for the mountains we are looking at some breezy conditions and so you can see here from the Adventist Health uh, uh, Cam the flag is blowing the trees are blowing as well and we'll continue to see these winds throughout the day 34 degrees, a southeast wind at 23 right now. And you can see the strongest of the winds through Tehachapi and over the Grapevine. And uh, also Southern California expecting some strong winds today down in L.A., Ventura. And even uh, Santa Clarita could uh, see some wind gusts near 70 miles per hour. We'll talk about that a little later. And you can see up in Tehachapi, temperatures will start out in those 30s and then 50s this afternoon. But that breeze will continue. I'll have much more in your forecast coming up in just a little bit. For now, we'll send it back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. The time now is 5.03, and this morning, the search continues for two California City boys who are still missing. It has been 66 days since 3-year-old Orson and 4-year-old Orrin West were last seen at their California City home. 17 News spoke with the city's chief of police to get answers to your questions. Chief John Walker says he believes there is very little chance the boys disappeared on their own because they couldn't have gotten out of the backyard and out of that neighborhood without the assistance of an adult. Walker says there are dozens of people of interest, but no one has been charged for taking the boys. Initially, we couldn't find anybody who had seen the kids, um, but we did actually find other neighbors who had actually seen kids there. They'd only been there three months, COVID, uh, all those things, cold weather, all that can attribute to that. You know, they had a huge backyard with a big fence. So, and... Uh, you know, here in California City, you've been you've been to the neighborhood. There's 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 a large uh, vacant lots between the properties. 17's Perla Shaheen has been tracking this story since the very beginning, and you can find her full interview with Chief Walker on our website kget.com. Just click on the hot link icon. Police are asking for help finding a 16-year-old girl who has been missing since Monday. Braylon Thomas was last seen around noon on Merrily Avenue. She has no prior history of running away. She is described as being 5 feet 3 inches tall, weighing about 135 pounds, with mid-length brown hair. She was last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, blue jeans, and carrying two black backpacks. If you have any information regarding her whereabouts, 
You're asked to call the police department at 327-7111. The current coalition against human trafficking is holding a virtual discussion today to help educate the public on the issue and prevent further exploitation. It's happening from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. The discussion will be hosted by Judge Robert Lung, who organizers say has more than 17 years of experience dealing with human trafficking cases. Judge Lung has also served on several committees at state and federal levels advising on human trafficking, including working as a consultant to the Justice Department. We've placed a link to sign up on our website. Just head to KGET.com and click on the hot link icon. And a reminder, there are a few ways to call for help against human trafficking. Call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 1-888-373-7888 or the Child Protective Services hotline at 631-6011. You can also visit the Department of Human Services website, kcdhs.org, for a full list of resources and information. The city of Tehachapi is doing its part to help restock the shelves at Houchin Community Blood Bank. The city and the blood bank are thanking everyone who came to last Thursday's blood drive. 54 people donated blood more than the two Bakersfield blood banks combined that day. Last year, the City of Tehachapi and, we- and the Tehachapi Valley Recreation and Parks District partnered with Houchin on 17 blood drives. In all, 594 units of blood were donated. The, blood, the need for blood, platelets, and plasma is ongoing, and Houchin encourages everyone who can donate to make an appointment at hcbb.com. Meantime, the city of Tehachapi is offering an incentive to encourage people to shop local. They're offering a rewards program. Customers who buy more than $100 in goods and services from small businesses in the city can bring their receipts to City Hall during the month of March. And in return, you'll get a $20 gift card for use at local restaurants. Valid purchases include retail items, food and drink, and do not include alcohol and personal services like haircuts and getting your nails done. Gift cards will be offered once per week for every person. Local first responders are helping to restock our nation's blood supply. Now, Yesterday morning, the Red Cross held its final bad, bad, Battle of the Badges blood drive, where firefighters, deputies, and police encourage people to donate blood in the name of their agency. The Red Cross is urging more people to donate after winter storms across the country forced hundreds of blood drives to be canceled. My little story for my family, my wife is a stem cell receipt recipient. And with that being said, she received a lot of platelets, uh, blood over the last two or three years going through her treatment. So we know how important this is and how important it is for our community to show up and give back and save a life. At last check, the Bakersfield Fire Department was in the lead. We're waiting to hear from the Red Cross who the final winner is. The novel COVID-19 pandemic has changed everything for the world of education. One Bakersfield High School teacher is using this pandemic as an opportunity to light up education. 17's Eliana Capian joins us now live in studio with more. Good morning, Eliana. Good morning, Alex. Tamara Clark and her husband, AJ Clark, have looked to the light for inspiration on this new teaching tool they call Light Up Education and Innovations. Now she's breaking the glass ceiling of COVID and using that glass as a board to teach and connect with her high school students virtually. That's the new class bell sound. And this is what a high school applied algebra class looks like during the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, in the crisis mode of education that we found ourselves in back in March of 2020, when the pandemic hit and really took hold here in Kern County, it became very clear to educators everywhere that we needed a way to connect with our kids over this new thing that we were doing called Zoom, Google Meets, Google Classroom, virtual learning, different learning management systems. Tamara and her husband, AJ Clark, are high school sweethearts. They met at Bakersfield High School and now Tamara teaches there. When the pandemic hit, Tamara, like many educators, had to quickly pivot her teaching style. She saw a video of of a teacher that had made a light board out of some plexiglass and some clamps. And so after seeing it, she asked if I could build her something like that. And so my mind started thinking, And then the fire service, we try to adapt, overcome, and improvise a lot. And so I took that kind of, that mantra and took the idea she had and made the first light board. The first board AJ made was made out of plexiglass, but they found that scratch too easily, so he went back to the drawing board. 
Now, the newest design should be ready in a few days. They have a grant from State Farm to produce at least 12 more boards, which will be distributed to more educators. We are in process with the county and the city to acquire a business license so that we can get these light boards out to any educator that is wanting to light up their education and light up teaching. Tamara says after this year, she believes education is going to have a fundamental shift and educators will focus on serving students across the learning spectrum. In my 18 year educational career, I have seen the students that I traditionally work with have a really hard time with traditional school. They don't want to get up early. They're teenagers. They automatically are creatures of the night. They learn on their own time when they can learn. And those kids were thriving. You can find more information about Light Up Education and, Invade and Innovations on our website, kget.com. Oh, that's pretty neat to see. That's the one thing that has been great about this pandemic is so much more creativity has come out because a lot of people have had to adapt in different ways. That's just one example right there. Really neat to see. Making headlines around the nation this morning, the Texas state legislator will hold hearings on statewide blackouts and the response by industry suppliers and operators. Now, both the Texas Senate and House will hold hearings this morning to examine the system's preparedness for extreme weather and the circumstances that led to the power outages directed by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. The Texas House of Representatives Committees on State Affairs and Emergency Resources will also hold a joint public hearing today on the statewide blackouts during the extreme winter weather. In the Conservative Political Action Conference, the largest gathering of GOP and conservative leaders kicks off in Orlando, Florida today. The conference will include a keynote address from the former President Trump this weekend. Mr. Trump, who is slated to deliver his first major speech since leaving the White House, still has not admitted publicly that he lost the election last November. In addition to Trump, this year's speakers include Republican Senators Ted Cruz, Mark Rubio and Josh Howley. In news around the state this morning, three people were hurt in San Diego last night when a car crashed into a home. Police say the vehicle went off the ramp, then continued down an embankment, blasted through a wooden fence and then ran right into the home. At least three people needed medical attention at the scene. Authorities said it's still not clear whether the people hurt were in the car or the home. There were no serious injuries resulting from the crash, but neighbors say when they saw where the car hit, they feared the worst. When I saw the car was in the house and I knew the bedrooms are in the back, I was afraid the kids or someone had gotten crushed by the car and I heard screaming. And so I called 911. Building engineers were on site to assess the damage to the structure and the Red Cross was requested to help two adults and two children displaced by the crash. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Following his passion and working to inspire others, a black vintner in Northern California wants to get more people of color interested in his craft. CNBC's Jane Wells joins us for this story from sunny Livermore Valley. How did you become a winemaker? Um, free booze? No. I, I <laughs> Phil Long grew up in Inglewood, California and became an architect. But he discovered wine, and when he and his wife, Deborah, moved to the Livermore Valley over a decade ago, they started making some. Wine growing up to me was that four-foot-tall bottle of Chianti in my dad's corner with a basket underneath. They learned a lot and eventually opened Longevity Wines, named the region's winery of the year in 2018. He grew the business by partnering with Bronco Wineries to go national, and the wines have been in shows like Big Little Lies. That's really good. Then last May, George Floyd died and Black Lives Matter exploded. We saw more online sales in the first two weeks of June than we did in the entire year of 2019. You see, Phil Long stands out. Less than 1% of winemakers are black. And there are even fewer black women who are sommeliers, like Tonya Pitts, wine director at the One Market Restaurant in San Francisco. I always tell people that I... I didn't choose wine, wine chose me. Both are now trying to seize the moment through organizations like the Association of African American Vintners to promote wine as a career, and support for scholarships has been pouring in. Is it all changing? Absolutely. Yeah, I would love the bowl of jelly beans of all the colors and creeds and genders of people who drink wine to look exactly like the bowl of jelly beans of the people who make wine. 
But as much as Phil Long wants to mentor others, he also wants to keep making good wine to honor Deborah, who died of pancreatic cancer two years ago. The longevity label represents the hearts he gave her every Valentine's Day. But before she left us, I made sure I took her to see this get put on so she knows she's always going to be part of this journey, she's always going to be part of this brand, and she's never going anywhere. Long says he's got more wine orders the first six weeks of this year than all of last year. But here's the deal. It's got to be good. And this Pinot Blanc of his scored 90 at Wine Enthusiast. That's good. In the Livermore Valley, I'm Jane Wells, CNBC Business News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.